Alright guys, welcome back. So, today we're going to do something that I kind of did a little bit in the past. You've seen me dance around it in the past, and we're going to show you how to make uh, templates. I had someone in my comments section literally ask, how do you make templates? And I noticed when I did my tutorials, I jumped ahead of the basics of templates. So we're going to start from scratch, from the beginning. So what you want to do is start on the water. Always, I always choose this water area because there's not a lot of waves over here, so you get a lot of consistency with what you're dropping down. And you're going to go and click the... Um, you're going to go click the overlay button there so that all the, the prop stack uh, and, and you're going to create one long line of barges really quick because um, essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing that trick where you basically uh, use a piece of a paper with a pencil and a string and uh, to make a circle or like a compass you know like a, like in math we're gonna do something like that but we're gonna make this prop basically the compass so um, now we have the one full long line we're gonna want to uh, put a prop at the end and that's gonna be um, basically the central point that we're going to spin from. So um, yeah, you can always choose cement blocks. You can choose cabins. They're both pretty good. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, the cabin to begin with because uh, the cabin it, it it changes the height as to when um, when your props will actually rise. You'll see in a minute when we actually do the templates what I mean by the difference between cabins and the cement blocks and what they actually do to the the spirals or the spins or whatever we're going to do. So let's go to continue on and um, we're going to put our props down. Uh, one at a time here. Um, as you see, I'm just going to kind of hurry up and put a few down because um, <coughs> uh, we're going to create a few templates at the same time so I can show you the difference between uh, what different angles do and what different distances do and what different props as your centerpiece does and how they change the angles and rise of your spirals. So yeah, so we're going to make templates that are good for making spirals and also good for just making uh, curved walls. We'll do tight curved walls and then uh, further distance curved walls just to kind of show you. Like you see, um, the one that's closer right there, that's going to make a tight curve, and the one that's further, that'll make a wider curve. And um, yeah, it depends on which way you flip it. Also, is uh, what's going to actually end up happening with the actual prop itself. So now that we have this long barge built with the one cabin at the end and straight props, then we're going to build a template. So when you do a template, always start with the first prop being the cabin or the cement block before you choose anything else. There's a very good reason for it. I'll show you in a minute. After that, you can go and choose the next block on the bottom. And, uh, and and the and the final piece that you're trying to actually create is your template. You need to make the template connect all the props between the beginning point and the end point. You can't just have a floating gap. They won't let you do that. But there is a way to create a floating gap. Let me show you how. So like the other props, you're going to start with the cabin at the end, and then you're going to click the barges that are underneath that connect you to the piece that you're going to want to template, and that's going to be that piece right there. But after you're done, you delete the connector pieces inside the template before you hit save template right there and now that you hit save template if you look you can see now it's just the cabin and that part floating on the outside and uh, that's that's uh, your basic uh, template concept for for these there's a lot of different uh, things you can do with templates this is just so you can make circular items that create curves and spirals but it all starts with this basics right here of creating a, a beginning point a long piece to connect them then one at the end that is going to be the actual prop itself and then you delete the interior ones like you see me doing there and then once you only have the cabin at the end you hit that save template and as you can see I've got a few templates saved right there look at that so now we're gonna go ahead and take these templates over to the airport and we're gonna show you how to create uh, 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 props with this. So I like the airport here. It's a good place to do. Start off with the barrel. Raise it to the top of this X on top of the airport and then switch it to template and you'll be centered. Now what you're going to do to create like a wall but not a spiral but a wall you're going to place an item down and then you're going to spin. Uh, before you spin it you're going to delete the cabin underneath. Then you're going to bring the prop back up again. You're going to spin it, drop the item down and then uh, after you drop the item down you're going to delete the cabin that's underneath you. See, back out, delete, then drop the item again, and spin. And so when you do it that way, that's the way you're going to do it so that you have, um, of course, just consistent walls that are all the same height. So now you've taken the one template to create the other prop. We're going to turn that into a template. Now you could just click on the items itself. You can go to um, Prop Templates and then down to Create Template. And you can just start clicking and saving if you want. But that creates a problem, and it creates a problem with when you want to set it up later. And let me let me show you right here. As you can see, um, even though it says everything is clicked together, uh, when we pull the prop out and we start to rotate it, it's not going to rotate on the proper axis. It's going to rotate on a really strange axis. Um, here, let me show you right here. Float this guy and start spinning this. And as you can see, it's see it's off kilter. It's hard to work with. It's going to be really hard to get even. Um, angles when it's spinning in weird directions. So there's a way to fix that. Let me show you. 
So this time, um, as you can see, we are going to go and put a cement block on the top on the side right there. We got that cabin on the side, but that actually doesn't really work very well. So we're going to put a cement block on the top, and then when we're going to save our template, again, start with that before you save anything else. And so basically when you're doing that, what it's doing is it's telling the game to use that prop as the starting orient point. <coughs> it's going to consider that kind of like your, your anchor that everything else on the prop is based on. So when you start to spin it, it's going to go ahead and um, spin it, as you can see, in that proper way like that right there. Now, to turn these walls into corkscrews and spirals, it's almost the exact same process, but there's one step that you skip, and it makes all the difference here. So we're going to take our basic template, the one that we have the close wall with, and when we put it on and spin it, instead of deleting the cabin underneath it, we're going to leave the cabin. And as you continue to spin it, as you can see, it creates a nice uh, corkscrew right there, a nice spiral. Now, whether it's a corkscrew or a spiral, um, when it's in this configuration, is really just based solely on... Uh, which direction you tilt it, whether you have it tilted upwards or sideways. And so, um, but there's many ways to do that. As you can see, that one, it's kind of a taller, wider, uh, more spread out curve. And then it's using the barges. But you can you can use all kinds of props with these. Let's put a template on top of that. Like, for instance, this template right here uses the curved, angled uh, prop. And so you place it down and you spin it. But before you spin it, go down to where it says World Heading and Pitch and switch it to either Pitch or Roller Yaw or whatever. And then switch it back. That'll actually place the prop down a little bit so that it doesn't do that thing where when you click it it drops even further you know exactly where it's supposed to be and so again this one you, know, you spin it you do not remove the cabin underneath and you spin it and you basically line up the lines on the top end of the barge on the right side there so that they're not overlapping too much so it's nice and smooth and that's the way you make the corkscrews that use uh, the the smooth angles which you can also use as roads transitions between wall rides to the ground and ramps and launches and just all kinds of stuff and um, so there's that one and then but we got more than that so this right here, I'm just trying to demonstrate uh, what the distance between the final prop and the cabin does for you. If you look right here, we have the medium prop and the cabin is just that far away. And you get quick build a quick little wall just to show you. And then on the same template out in the, out in the ocean, I used another piece that the next piece was just a little bit further away. And that one, the cabins are straight up or down. So as you can see, that's really what the distance between the cabin and the final prop does is it increases... Um, the, 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 the wall, but it also decreases the angle so you have a smoother axis. Uh, if you want to create something with a very, very, very mild grade to it, you create a great distance between the cabin and the barge prop itself. But as you can see, that's the difference between the two. So there's more spirals to do with the barges. There's the one that uses this one end, this one smooth end at the edge. If you look at one side of the barge has nothing on it. One side has a big, uh, like, like uh, I don't know, hook on it, and then both sides have those tires. But then one end is nice and smooth. So we're going to go ahead and take these nice smooth ends, and we're going to place them so they're facing inwards on the cabin, and we're going to create little corkscrews and spirals out of those smooth walls. We're going to do the one with the cabin first to show you what a wider corkscrew is going to look like. Then we'll show you a narrower one. But uh, these are um, the ones that you see that are like really fancy inside that, that um, are different than the others. But they're pretty easy to make. So we're going to head on back over to the airport over here with our new prop that we made. As you can see, a lot of the things I like to go over to this area for the props, um, just because it's nice and consistent. It's near the water, and it's got the airport nearby in case you want to fuck around with some other prop. But there we go. As you can see, we place this down. We're going to spin it without removing the cabin, and we're going to make sure that those gray areas at the end of the, of the prop overlap. You don't want any edges so that you slam into it, so you want it so that the angle is harsh enough to overlap, but close enough where they actually like really really do cross over each other. And you repeat the exact same process that you are doing before. In fact, you can do this uh, th these same props for walls also. You don't have to do the spiral. You can use them for just about anything that you, that you can think the sherm sideways with like this. You can stack them in terminal wall rights going the other way. There's a lot of things you can do with them. But um, yeah, as you can see, this is a this is how you can create those corkscrews. So this corkscrew is going to be a little wider than the other ones, but we're still using the cabin. And the reason I, I mentioned the cabin because I do one in a minute that only uses the, the construction block too, so you can see the difference in the grade and how much it rises. In fact, you can use any prop for the centerpiece where the cabin is that is nice and blocky and square, <clears throat> um, because basically the next prop is going to rise on top of it. So the taller the prop the longer the angle on the spiral or the corkscrew. And I'll show you what I mean by that. In fact, we're going to do something a little creative here for a minute. Instead of continuing on this corkscrew, I'm going to kind of mix up the ideas and I'm going to start with a rise and then turn into a wall, as you can see, and then go back down. So it's a rising corkscrew to a wall, back down to a lower piece. So you can do a lot of things with these. Um, you don't always have to do the corkscrews. Uh, the templates are, are, this whole spinning method is a really nice way to keep your props just even in line and smooth and flush against each other. But see that? Look at that. I'm basically deleting two cabins now each time to make myself go back down. 
And this method could be used for lots of things. It could be used, be used to create circles and fake ground. In fact, let's go and show you that right now. With this, I have um, one of those cabins with a flat side on this uh, facing inwards. So as I turn it, I can either turn it into um, flat ground if I want to build a template and flip it upside down. Or I can even turn it into a nice wall ride using that one end. That one end, even though you see the gray stripe and it looks thin, there's an imaginary wall underneath that your car can drive that can, uh, pretty much doubles the width of that gray stripe. So you can even use these as wall rides, creating the distance or shortening the distance so that you can can uh, then uh, you know, like I said, have it have it uh, uh, be a wall right on its own using these templates. If you tilt the prop before you spin it, you can also do that corkscrew method that you saw me doing with the other barges and create corkscrews out of these items. Really, all you really need is a flat edge facing inwards where the central prop, which we've been using for the cabin, is. In fact, speaking of using the cabin, let's go and switch this up and let's show you what it's like to use the um, the construction block here at the end. So at first it might not seem like there's any difference between two props. It's a prop in the center and it's not the actual one that you're leaving at the end, but there is a difference. And the difference is when you're making that spiral and you're leaving the prop underneath, like when we left the cabin underneath, and the other one's resting on top of it, is now raising it slower. And as it raises it slower and not as high as the other one, it now decreases the angle of the spiral. See, if you make your spiral too long, it's going to end up being kind of hard to manage. If you make it too wide, <coughs> your car might lose grip at the top upside down part. So you kind of want to find a nice balance of distance from the prop and also height of prop. So let's just go and demonstrate what I mean by this. See, we put the construction, we're going to spin it. And as you can see, instead of those big gaps between the two where it rises several inches, it's only rising just a little bit. So uh, we're going to go and speed this up and make a nice spiral right there. See, doesn't that look nice? It's pretty fucking cool, huh? And again, let's go and do something interesting to it at the end. Let's uh, let's go and uh, make the bottom part uh, into a wall. So we'll go the other direction. And it won't spiral, it'll just be a wall. So you got yourself a wall right that goes up to um, a corkscrew angle. And so <clears throat> um, you can really get creative with these if you want. You can make them um, up and down and side to sides. And you can start tilting them and see if they hook together better. But this is the basics of it. It's the basic like a compass in math. Uh, it's basically just a, you know, place a centralized point that is not going to move an anchored point with a specified distance between you and the object and spin it and you're going to end up with a perfect circle. Uh, just like, again, just like math. So we'll do one last one here. Um, this one, I'm going to choose a tall item, an especially taller item like the tractor trailers to demonstrate what the spiral looks like when you use a taller item to show you how much sharper the angle gets. See, uh, tractor trailer spin, tractor trailer spin. We're using the inside of those barges and now it's going to make a pretty sharp angle for the entirety of the spiral. Uh, you can see I keep my camera close down to the end. That's just so I can see the, the close details of the actual scenes. Then when you raise it up too much, it's kind of hard to see if it's overlapping properly. And then you get yourself in the race and you find out there's a, a bumpy seam somewhere. It really pisses me off when you got to back up and restart it over again. But yeah, check it out. The trailers made a really, really long spiral. So like always, make sure uh, to put a prop on the top to, to anchor it down so you can spin it easier. Uh, I try to put it along the edges over here so it's kind of even with the seam of the props. Try to imagine in the future when I'm placing them down that they will be, um, you know, uh, then square with the lines of the of the prop itself. When going down and saving it, make sure you hit every single one. It would suck if you saved the template, deleted it, and then found out that you missed one prop in the middle, wouldn't it? So there we go. We got ourselves a our spiral there looking pretty nice. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this build there. It's not so much. It's a tutorial. I'm sorry. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really wanted to uh, answer that guy's question in my comment section, asking how do you build basic templates that I skipped, and at the same time show you how to make just a bunch of templates at once: spirals, corkscrew, wall rights, and what the difference is between. Uh, the height of the central uh, object, the fulcrum object, and the distance between the fulcrum object and the prop object itself, and what is needed, like a flat edge, and all that good stuff. So, anyways, if you're new here, uh, hey, thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. I always have new videos every single day. I try to stream at least uh, two or three times a week, and uh, you know, I mostly do GTA videos. And if you guys uh, already subscribed, well, then what the fuck are you even listening to me for? You already know you're supposed to be here. <laughs> but anyway, so we're about to um, hit the end of the video here. Um, uh, I want to thank you all for joining my stream the other night. We had really good time in GTA. I had something like 21 people watching for several hours. <clears throat> We're going to try to do that again maybe a little bit later tonight. So um, if you guys are on and you see me on, uh, you know, make sure to follow me on Twitter because I always put announcements out that we're starting the streams there. And if you aren't on my Twitter, uh, follow me on the social club or join the Ahoy crew because that's also another way to get into our GTA races. Don't forget to tune in every day because i got lots of games coming. got new Overwatch, got a lot of new things. But I hear the music starting off, guys, so I'm going to get out of here. You know the music it is. So anyways, thanks for watching, and eat a dick.